Now, today marks annual World Press Freedom Day, which brings to mind a powerful moment from the White House Correspondents' Dinner over the weekend. Look no further than what's happening in Ukraine. Look at what's happening there. Journalists are risking and even losing their lives to show the world what's really happening. You realize how amazing it is. Like, in America, you, you have the right to seek the truth and speak the truth, even if it makes people in power uncomfortable. At least 14 journalists have died since Russia's invasion of Ukraine began. And joining us now, Willie? founder and editor-in-chief of the Ground Truth Project, Charlie Sennett. He recently is back from reporting in Ukraine. Charlie, it's great to see you. I uh, want to talk broadly about uh, World Press Freedom Day, but let me hear a little bit about your reporting, first of all. Uh, you went in on the ground. Uh, you got up close on the front lines in Kharkiv. Yep. And you looked at some NGOs that are trying to get this humanitarian assistance into the hands of the Ukrainian people, but having some trouble doing it. That's right. We were right up where the fighting is very intense today in Kharkiv, and the reports are the Ukrainian military is pushing Russia right back to the border now. But when I was there, those villages were in great peril. And one of the things we consistently heard was there's no humanitarian aid getting through. So great appreciation that the military aid has gotten through. You could see the howitzers flowing in literally on the road. You could see them coming down the road, tanks and howitzers. Um, but you did not see humanitarian aid. That's what we observed. We worked with an organization called Save Our Allies. We sort of embedded with them and went in, and uh, they were welcomed with incredible open arms and really great relief that this aid has finally gotten through. And how are the Ukrainian journalists covering this story, as you call it, the story of their lives? This mm -hmm. is their country that's been overrun. Their fellow citizens, their military, their president have showed incredible courage in the face of this. But what's it like to be a Ukrainian journalist covering this war? You know, this is such a powerful moment right now for an independent free press. We see it in our own country. Today is a big news day. Free press is doing some good work today. But in Ukraine, there's a sense of a history there where the independent free press has fought for more than 20 years to really carve out an independent democracy in Ukraine. What we learned, I think the most interesting I learned in Kharkiv was the collapse of local news all through Ukraine has greatly impacted its ability to hear what's happening in these eastern corridors, particularly in the Donbass. And the reporters who shared with me there this struggle that's very similar to the struggle here in the United States, where we watch local news organizations collapsing right and left, we're left blind by that. We need an independent free press, but we need not just a national free press. We need a strong local free press here in America, but also, as I learned, very much so in Ukraine. And we're there to try to work with them to make that happen. So. We have a project called Report for the World. We're going to try to be in there to really fund those journalists in Ukraine and Poland and elsewhere. And today we're announcing a real expansion of the program because it's, it's really needed out there, not only here in the United States, but around the world. So, Charlie, perhaps the most powerful moment at the Correspondents' Dinner on Saturday was when they paid tribute to the journalists who had been killed in Ukraine, and President Biden led an emotional standing ovation right. uh, at that time. And there's also a lot of talk that evening from both the president and from Trevor Noah about the contrast between the press freedoms we enjoy here in the United States and how they don't have any in Russia. Give us a sense, from your perspective, what, we, what the state of the press is in Russia, but also in so many of these authoritarian countries around the world. Yeah, I thought Trevor Noah asked a riveting question, and you could feel uh, the humility in the room when they were trying to grapple with his question. Are we doing enough with the press freedom we have? Look, it's an honor, it's a privilege, but what are we doing with it? And I think it's the biggest question of our time right now is, yes, we have this robust free press. But we are not strong enough, particularly in local communities. And that, to me, is the big connection here on World Press Freedom Day, is that we struggle because we don't have local eyes. We don't have ground truth in these local, local communities. And, and we're not there on the ground. I think this feeling is rippling through the world, Brazil, India, uh, Ukraine, certainly, Hungary. You could go around the world and see where this incredible need for a stronger free press is happening, but I think the place where we begin to rebuild it is locally, and that's, that's the whole focus of our organization. Here in the United States, we work with AP. We are very proud supporters of, of about 325 reporters in more than 200 newsrooms here in the United States, so trying to shore up local news here. But I think the new front line, the new battle, is going to be to really look at how these same problems are happening around the world, and we're going to ask 
in, in sort of honor to, to Trevor Noah's great question to the media, what can we do? We're going to try to be out there supporting local news wherever we can how, around the world. How do we get that back in America, Charlie, on the local level? Because as you say, we've watched beloved <coughs> local newspapers evaporate over yep. the last 20 years or so. Local news stations, television, radio as well, often just taking national news and, and sort of repurposing right. it. They don't have the resources to report. That means city council meetings are going unattended, school board meetings, everything else that needs eyes on it. How do you begin to get that back? The way we're doing it is we're working with local communities to say, work with us so we can find these really inspiring new generation of journalists who we can put in there and who can do that work covering planning boards, covering city hall, covering boards of education, and doing the kind of work that's not only important to serve a community for its needs of you know fact-based needs, they need trusted local information, but it's also this way in which it binds us together as communities. And I think it is the glue that holds a democracy together is the local news. So how do we get it back? Look, we're trying through our program, Report for America, that's one way. We think public policy will play a role in this as well. At some point, it's going to need to. We already have public policy through CPB and other ways in which we support local news networks through public media. I think we're going to have to see a much more ambitious effort made and a greater recognition of its importance. We can do this. There are exciting new digital news organizations out there that are really changing the landscape and doing great work. Public media is very strong, public radio. You write about these beautiful newspapers, many of which I love, admire, and some of, some of the places I actually worked are fading. They need support. They need support from people who care about news. You've got to be aware of just how important an independent free press is, especially on this day, Pro Press Freedom Day. And one of the ways to get it back is to support the Ground Truth Project, which is Charlie's organization, and Mike Barnacle, let me say, one of the greats of the Boston Globe. <laughs> yes. Charlie Senate. Charlie, thanks, thanks so much. Thanks, Willie. Happy we'll birthday. be reading the piece. Thank you. We'll be reading the piece in the Globe titled The Story of Their Lives, How Ukrainian Journalists Are Reporting on a Savage War and Keeping Democracy Afloat.